All right, so fall will soon end. That means, of course, the beginning of spring. We feel like we're already in it now. Of course, a lot of you might notice a few things with the changing weather. Our resident pediatrician, Dr. Susan Bankson, is here with us from the Baton Rouge Clinic to talk a little bit about that. And we were talking earlier. First of all, good morning to you. Good morning. Uh, that weather, you know, the old adage was, you know, uh, when the weather changes, you get sick. And I guess there is some little truth to that. There is some connection because, for example, in the springtime now, uh, with the changes in barometric pressure, the sometimes rain, sometimes hot, sometimes <laughs> cold, our nasal passages are getting inflamed. Um, and when that happens, that makes us more vulnerable to catch uh, viruses and such, especially if we're touching our hands and face a lot. Um, and that's going to be more the viruses that like the warmer weather, and we have a few of those out there. We do indeed, and uh, you were kind of educating me. Uh, I guess the first would be kind of the spring allergies you got to worry about, but this norovirus, I didn't realize that. I guess some people might think that they get food poisoning or whatever it might be, but it very well could be this. Right, norovirus really likes the warm weather. It's the one that a lot of people hear about on cruise ships, and we have heard in the national uh, news that it is out there. Um, and we've seen it in our practice. Kids come in, they're usually pretty sick, laying on the table one to, th one to two days there, um, and uh, stomach cramping, vomiting, diarrhea, a little bit of fever. Um, and what's interesting is it's all sy symptomatic treatment. You know, you look for blood, you look for high fever. Those would be things you definitely need to tell your pediatrician about. But the base, or your adult doctor, because it hits everybody. Um, but the bottom line is uh, you'll get over it in one to two days, but you're actually still contagious for about three days afterwards. So continued hand washing and maybe trying to stay away from a few people would be good. And I don't think most people realize that, that that, yeah. that contagious it, thing three days afterwards. Lasts. So the rhinovirus, the other virus that likes the warm weather that uh, can attack us when our nasal passages are dry and, and, and more vulnerable, um, it causes 50% uh, of all colds. And with the whole mask thing and the virus is kind of mutating, we're finding that that virus is even giving them high fever. Some of those kids Ooh. are coming in. It's not just the common cold. Um, but it is, again, treated by symptomatic treatment, uh, prevented by hand washing and that sort of deal. But um, the high fevers would get uh, the attention. A lot of pediatricians will tell you 72 hours of fever. But I always tell my parents, look at your kid. Your boot's on the ground. You know mm -hmm. this. Um, and your boot's on the ground. You know your child. And if your child has a low-grade fever but is acting really wonky, you need to come in and see us. You know, let us be the judge of that. But if they're running around, I had a mom call me just last night, kids running around <laughs> in between fevers but has those high spikes, we can watch those a few days. That makes sense. Is there ever a... a, a slow time for y'all it's always something <laughs> it's always something <laughs> uh be it that even during the well seasons uh you know like maybe during the summer we're doing all those physicals and camp physicals <laughs> right. and that sort of thing so, so you're still going and rock That's and roll thank you dr susan basic appreciate it